，呃 ，Pat 要上 ，OK， 呃 ，Hello， 嗯，好 ，Wait a minute， 等一下，啊，我刚 miss 他 ，OK， 哦、oh, ，Hello，Hi，Hi， 来 ，Good morning，Good morning， 哦 ，So sorry， 呃 ，I I I cannot hear，I cannot hear you。Oh, um. Hey, your microphone is off. Okay. Just a second. Yeah, I heard you. Hey, it's good. You can hear yeah, me. Yeah, I heard you. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, welcome you. You 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 join our meeting. We just oh, did yeah. how how uh how we run our uh community in this year. Yeah. 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 Thanks and, so much. For uh, mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, because we just uh, uh, this timing, uh, this is uh, uh, this is the beginning of our winter vacation. Uh, so many of our members they have uh, they are busy in uh, to close the works they uh in the end of layer set in their semi so they may cannot uh attend this uh this uh, this uh, work uh so, sure. so we, uh, that's why we record this process for, to share them uh because this uh you uh today you give us our you give us our workshop is very uh, precious for us, we have a, a little experience to to run a hackathon to mm -hmm. to crack a question. We uh, we we always want uh, want to solve some que some question, but uh, we we are the uh, mm -hmm. uh oh, I think he's frozen. Oh, sorry, oh, yeah. uh, this link. Uh, it's uh, uh we have a bad infrastructure here. <laughs> Sorry, we have we have okay. We just want to learn uh how to solve a question uh through the collaborate co through the collaboration. This is very important, especially in this uh in this better timing. Oh, 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 okay, so I think uh, uh now I let uh Pat introduce. Uh, himself and uh, tell us uh, how we uh, go through with him. Okay, Pat? Perfect. Yeah. And since we have a small group, um, feel free to jump in if you have questions. Um, I have a, a presentation, and um, at the end, I'd, I'd love some time for like open discussion. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to take the, the entire block of time. Um, I, I'm guessing maybe uh, it's an hour's worth of content, depending mm -hmm. on how fast I, I get through it. Um, of course, if uh, if you have questions along the way, that could affect the timing as well. Um, so I, I guess we'll see what happens. And since it's uh, recorded as well, if you have uh, if I'm unclear at any point, um, that would be a great time to to jump in and uh, to make mm -hmm. sure that people who see the recording also understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I'll just share my screen. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have a we have it. Perfect. Um, yeah, so just a, a little bit about me and uh, my experience with hackathons. Um, well, so first, personally, um, I, I really like rock climbing. Um, during uh, non-coronavirus times, uh, I like to go to, uh, there's a climbing gym that I used to go to in the United States. Um, I'm now in, in France, by the way, um, but there are climbing gyms around here that are unfortunately closed due to the coronavirus. Um, I, um, I also like to go to bars um, and uh, hang out and drink beer uh, during non-coronavirus times. I'd be doing that a lot more, <laughs> uh, harder to do now. Um, I also have uh, two pet reptiles. Um, so this is uh, my pet turtle and my pet snake. 
Um, I, I, I really like unusual animals. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, these are, uh, these are my two pets. Um, in terms of my scientific background, um, so I'm, I'm part of the psychological science accelerator along with Saoqin. Um, so, uh, if you haven't heard of it before, um, it's an organization that's geared towards doing large collaborative research projects. Um, there are, uh, 1400 members of, uh, people who call themselves members of our network who, uh, basically that means that they, they agree in principle to, uh, help run a big team science project. Um, to give you a sense of how big these can get, um, we, uh, just uh, published our, our first empirical project. Um, this one had um, uh, collaborators from 41 countries who contributed uh, 11,000 participants. Uh, so these are uh, these projects that we do can get very large. Um, we, we also did a batch of uh, COVID related studies that um, altogether have uh, something like 40,000 participants. Um, so the, these can get really big and um, uh, relevant to doing um, things like hackathons, um, a lot of how we try to um, leverage the, the efforts of all these uh, members from all these different countries um, is by holding events like hackathons where that allow people to come together and do a, a burst of work in a concentrated period of time. Um, in addition to the Psych Science Accelerator, I myself have uh, participated in a variety of team-based science projects where uh, you try to manage a, a large group of people to do a specific task. Um, and uh, I've also been an active member of the Society for the Improvement of Psychological Science. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a more recent scientific society. And I believe uh, in psychology, it's one of the first societies to use the hackathon format. Um, I've been a, a, a member, a participant since I think it's second year. Um, so I'd say I, I have some years of experience with hackathons. Um, I'm not an expert, but it's, a, it's certainly enough to um, uh, know what the structure is like and what makes for a good hackathon and what makes for uh, one that's less productive. Um, the hackathon format itself, um, I, I mentioned, uh, I, I believe it started at the Society for the Improvement of Psychological Science. Um, you can see it's, uh, it's the, the second item um, after training sessions. Um, hackathons is one of the primary formats uh, at the Society for the Improvement of Psychological Science. Um, so it's, it's fairly recent as far as I know in psychology. Um, but uh, it's, it's something that I, I'm starting to see crop up at uh, other conferences as well. Um, so uh, there's been a, at least one hackathon at uh, the Association for Psychological Science. Uh, I included a, a link to a blog post about uh, the hackathon format that came out of one of the more recent meetings. Um, by the way, it, I think Sao Chin already uh, shared the OSF link that I sent him. Um, yes. but uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so you can you'll have access to this link um, if you uh, look at my slides that are on the OSF page. Um, so that can be an extra resource for you. Um, th there was also a uh, a blog on the hackathon format um, at the uh, American Psychological Society. Um, so that's that's two fairly large societies that uh, have shown an interest in this format. Um, there are, I, I've seen this format used at other conferences as well. Um, and of course, it's it's something that you can do to um, structure work for a particular scientific project. Um, so this is something that I, I think um, many people see some use in. Um, so a hackathon can be many different things. Um, the definition that I'm going to go with for this workshop is that um, it's, uh, it's an event where you have a, a large-ish group of people. Um, they have a specific, well-defined task, 
and they sit down and work on it for an extended period of time. Uh, so it could be many things. Um, generally, uh, in a hackathon, the, the people don't might not know each other very well before they, they start working on it. Um, and uh, part of the purpose of the hackathon is to bring these people together who may not have worked together at all before and structure their work in such a way that they get a lot done in a short period of time. Um, so one, one aspect of hackathons that I'll go through is that um, even though the amount of time that the hackathon runs for may be short, maybe it's only two hours long, or maybe it's, it's half a day, um, there's a fair amount of uh, preparation that the, the planners have to do to make sure that the hackathon is successful, that you, you accomplish the hackathon's goals. So I, uh, I think you, you can think of hackathons as, um, even though they go for a short amount of time, the, um, the amount of time that is required to prepare it is a little bit hidden to the participants. Um, so the, there's a, a reasonable amount of planning that you have to do to make sure that everybody knows what to do and uh, is able to do it during the hack itself. Um, one uh, very prominent feature of a hackathon is that it's task focused. And uh, the intent of the hackathon is to accomplish that well-defined task that I mentioned before. Um, this is in contrast to maybe a workshop or if you're at a conference, it, it's a contrast to a talk. Um, in a talk or a workshop, the point is to have a group of people talk together and um, maybe share knowledge. Um, in a hackathon, the intent is for people to do something. Um, they're trying to accomplish a specific goal. So um, if you go to a conference and attend a hackathon, uh, the session might be quite different than uh, you've experienced before um, and quite different from what you might be expecting if you haven't gone to that kind of session before. Because the whole, the whole goal is uh, for people in the hack to do something instead of to talk at each other. So um, in the remainder of the, the workshop, I'll talk about um, some of that planning that you have to do in order to make sure that the hack is productive. Um, I'll talk a bit about um, uh, what to expect if you're participating in Hackathon as well. Um, I, I prepared a, a template for, um, that can help structure your, your planning process. And um, I'll go through a couple examples of um, hacks that uh, I've attended. Um, uh, I'll talk a, a bit about uh, when a hackathon is useful, and then if we have time, and if uh, if you all are are interested, uh, we can do a bit of brainstorming at the end about how you might use this format uh, in your work or classes or in in other settings. Um, I think it'll be easier to talk about uh, examples and um, when a hackathon is useful. Um, after I've talked about the considerations um, for uh, that you have to think through when you're planning a hack, um, because uh, those will, will make clear um, the conditions where you can have a successful hack and the conditions where it's uh, maybe less useful. Um, so I think you can structure uh, the planning process around a series of five questions. Um, and uh, the way you answer these questions will um, basically determine your planning process. Um, the first question is, what is the task? Um, and uh, I've already mentioned a bit that the task has to be well-defined. So the, uh, you have to answer this question fairly specifically. The second question is, uh, what is the task structure? Um, certain tasks are, um, well, I'll talk a little bit more in a bit about what I mean by that, but the task structure is a little bit different from what the task is itself, and the structure determines how whether the task is good for a hack or not. Um, how much time do you have? What is the background knowledge of your participants, and who are they? And um, uh, what is your plan for follow-up once the hack is done? 
Um, so uh, when you're thinking about what the task is, you ought to be very specific um, about what it is. Uh, the more specific you can be, um, the uh, the better your planning will go, and the the more your the hack participants will know what to do. Um, the task should also be something that's achievable. So um, generally, hackathons run for a reasonably short period of time. Um, we're talking maybe uh, an hour to. You know, I've attended hacks that run for um, as much as two days. Two days is still not very long, um, at, at least when you're thinking about you know the the time scale that scientific projects run. Um, so this is a, a fairly short period of time, and you need to think realistically about uh, what can be achieved in that short period of time. And then finally, um, usually the task ought to be simple. Um, and by this, I mean um, it, it should be something that you can do in a room without getting a lot of extra training. Um, there are certain conditions where you can make the, the task a little bit more complicated, um, but usually these, these are tasks that um, if you get a bunch of people um, into a room together, they can reasonably achieve without um, uh, you know, getting, uh, taking another class or getting specialist training. Um, so I, I've got two examples of uh, hack goals that you, you might set. Um, this is taken from uh, a hackathon from the 2017 um, session of, of the Society for the Improvement of Psychological Science. Um, so one goal that you might uh, set is uh, you want to encourage a bunch of scientific journals to adopt policies friendly to open science. Um, Notice that this goal is, is very broad. Um, it's not clear what the policies are that you're trying to get the, um, the journals to adopt. It's also not clear which journals you're trying to get to adopt specific policies. It's not clear what it means for a policy to be friendly for, to open science. It's not clear how, how you're going to encourage the journals to adopt the policies. So, um, Imagine you're a participant, you sit down into a room and uh, you're told, okay, the purpose of this hack is to you know, get journals to adopt policies friendly to open science. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> what am I supposed to do when I'm sitting in this room? Mm -hmm. um, this is very, not very specific. Um, it's probably not achievable and it's probably not simple either. Or at least uh, it would need to be fleshed out a lot before uh, before the hack participants know what to do. In contrast, a goal like scoring policies on their, uh, or scoring journals on their policies using the top guidelines, that's much more specific. Um, the top guidelines, um, they're, it's basically a checklist um, for um, understanding which policies uh, encourage open science. It's something that already exists, so, if I'm a hack participant, I don't have to come up with this checklist myself. Um, I can just go to journal websites and uh, find out their policies and then use the checklist to uh, check off whether the, the journal has those policies. Um, so this is a lot more suitable for a hack. Um, I don't know if you all are, are familiar with this meme, um, but um, <laughs> this is a way to let you know that the top goal, the, the goal at the at the top, getting journals to top friend, policies friendly to open science, that's not so suitable. Um, whereas the, the second goal, that's a little bit more suitable. Um, this person is uh, the, the US rapper Drake. Um, he approves of the second goal, doesn't approve of the first. Um, this is another example of um, uh, taken from a, a real hack. Um, this is one that I organized. Um, so the, the top goal, clean our data set. Um, again, that's not very specific. It might be achievable, but uh, it's unclear. Um, it could be a really big data set. Um, so that might not be a reasonable goal for half a day. Um, and it, it may not be simple either. Uh, in contrast, 
the, the goal that we actually set for the hack um, was to change, um, there was a, a series of, uh, or there was one question in this data set uh, where participants wrote uh, in a, a text box the country that they were from, and uh, people made a lot of mistakes. Um, uh, people were uh, using different uh, languages to enter the, the country that they were from. Um, so uh, what we ended up doing was uh, uh, changing those free text entries into ISO codes. ISO codes, it's a standard way of uh, denoting which country uh, you're from. Um, it ended up, we ended up having to do a bit of Googling, but this was specific. We knew exactly what to do. We, we needed to change these into ISO codes. Um, it was much more achievable. Notice that this isn't, um, it's focused on uh, one specific aspect of the data set that we're trying to clean rather than the, the full data set. Um, and uh, anybody could do it. You just need to be able to do some Googling. Um, so uh, when you're thinking about what the task is, um, it, it could be that uh, what you need to do is uh, takes, take a goal that is very broad and make it much more narrow. Um, that's uh, making the task excuse me, specific and also achievable. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the sort of uh, consideration that, that you should be um, working with when you're thinking about what the task is. Make sure that it's, it's narrow enough um, and that it's uh, limited enough to be achievable. And make sure that uh, someone who sits down and um, is, wants to be helpful but might not have a lot of background about what you're doing is actually able to do it. So again, um, on this particular goal, uh, Drake does not approve of the, the first goal, but he does approve of the second. Somewhat separate from what the task is, is um, how the task is structured. And um, structure here refers to um, if you're thinking about like a manager who is is trying to manage a set of work, um, structure refers to um, whether the specific parts of the task are dependent on each other. So um, one way a task could be structured is um, let's uh, let's imagine that you're you're doing some data analysis. Um, so one of the first uh, steps that you have to, to go through to analyze the data oh, set is sorry. to clean the data. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Sachin, did you have a question? All right. Um, so let's... There's some problems in there. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, what's up? Sorry, I just lost your, 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 your words for, for a while. I think the, oh, okay. the internet was a little bit, uh, yeah, glitchy <laughs> earlier, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, did you, so I was talking about the task structure. Yeah. Um, did you yeah. get that? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, well, let, let me explain again. Um, so one way that, ta that a task could be structured is that the, the words or the, the results from one subtask um, are dependent on the results of another subtask. So let's imagine that you're analyzing a data set. Um, the first step to analyze a data set is usually to clean the data set um, to make sure that you know there aren't major coding errors or um, whatever. Um, in order to actually do the analysis, you need the clean data set. So in other words, um, the, the results of uh, the analysis are dependent upon the results of the the subtask where you're cleaning the data set. Um, and some types, some tasks are structured like this, where you have a, a first stage. Um, the results of that first stage of doing the, the, the task are dependent on or um, feed into the next stage. And then there's a, maybe a third stage and a fourth stage. And you need to finish each uh, subtask in order to make it to the next subtask. There are other tasks that are, are structured um, 
such that the subtasks are, are not dependent on each other. Um, so uh, let's, let's think about the, the cleaning process for a second. Um, I, I mentioned how um, we had this, uh, in this one particular data set, there was this free text entry box where people indicated their country. Um, so uh, in order to clean that, that free text entry question, um, we need to divide up the rows of the data set. And um, person one, um, me, I could take the first 10 rows. Another person could take the next 10 rows. Another person could take the next 10 rows. And each person could work on cleaning their rows um, independently of each other. And uh, the first 10 rows don't need to be cleaned in order to, for uh, another person to work on the next 10 rows. Completing each of those subtasks, are it, they're all independent of each other. It doesn't matter in which order they get accomplished. So the implication of this is that um, the, the most efficient way usually to um, complete a task that's structured this first way, where the tasks sort of feed into each other, you need subtask one to be accomplished to do subtask two. It's usually for one person to do all of those subtasks because they understand how the first subtask was uh, completed. Um, so that allows, that makes it easier for the, them to do subtask two and subtask three and subtask four. However, with the second structure, you can divide up the work across multiple people at the same time. So because the subtasks are not dependent on each other, one person can do the first subtask, another person can, can do the second subtask and so forth. Um, that also means that as long as you have uh, enough people to uh, divide up all the subtasks, you can usually finish um, a task structured in the second way uh, a lot faster than a task structured the first way. So when you're planning a hackathon, you're looking for tasks that are structured the second way, where um, none of the subtasks are dependent on each other. That means you can divide them up across a lot of people and get them done really fast. So one word that I, I like to use to describe this describe this this type of structure is that the task ought to be batchable. You ought to be able to break it up, divide it across a lot of people um, who can complete all the subtasks at the same time. That's the recipe for a successful hack. Uh, you want to give people a task that, that can be divided up across lots of people. So the, the next consideration is um, who your, your participants are specifically. Um, and you can um, divide this into several sub-questions. Um, so one is, uh, how many participants do you have? Um, the more participants you have, uh, the more you can uh, divide up the, this uh, big task, um, which means that you can get more done at, um, in this uh, short compressed period of time. A second uh, sub-question is, um, what is the background knowledge of your participants? Um, so uh, by background knowledge, I, I mean, um, what do they know about uh, the overall task that you're doing? Um, what contextual information do they have? Um, so to, to give you an example, um, on this uh, example that I've been going with of cleaning a particular data set, um, is it the case that the participants know where the data set came from? Do they know how the data set was generated? Um, so this, you're not thinking necessarily about expert knowledge here. You're just thinking like, do they know what it is that you're doing and why it's important? Or do they know the project that they're working on? Do you have to provide them with a lot of uh, background information about the project in order for them to do their work? Um, and of course, the, the less they know about your project, the more you'll probably have to give them that background information at the start of the hack. And then finally, um, what are their skills? Um, what, what's their special expertise? And um, I, I mentioned um, when I talked about the, 
that that first question that you have to ask what is the task that most tasks ought to be simple um, well here's a place where you can kind of scale up the complexity if you're doing a, um, a hackathon with a bunch of software developers um, well uh, software development is something that is simple for them that might not be simple for other people so it's it's much more reasonable to do a hack that requires a lot of computer programming if all of your hack participants are software developers. So the general considerations about who your participants are is how many you have, what is their background knowledge about the, the project that you're working on, and what are their skills. The next question is um, how much time you have. Um, so if you don't have very much time, if, if uh, your hackathon maybe lasts an hour or two hours, um, first of all, it, it means that uh, the scope of, your, of the task that you, uh, you complete has to be quite narrow. Um, so that means that uh, when you're thinking about what the task is and whether it's achievable, you might have to make the goal very limited if you don't have very much time. But the, the second implication is um, I, I mentioned that one of the considerations um, about who your participants are is their background knowledge. Um, and uh, if you don't have very much time, that means that you don't have uh, a lot of time to give to fill in the blanks of their background knowledge. So that might mean that um, you, you might want your participants to know a lot about the project already. Um, or again, maybe you just limit the, the, the scope of the hackathon. You make, it, um, you make the task very near, narrow and, and achievable. If you have more time, um, the hackathon can be a lot more ambitious. Um, uh, you, you might be able to accomplish really quite a lot, um, especially if, you're, if maybe you have like a, a two-day hackathon. Um, I've attended a few of those at the at SIPS. Um, and so, uh, yeah, potentially you can really get a lot done if, if you have that much time. It also uh, allows you to maybe use the, the hack to, part of the hack to teach people background knowledge or skills, um, or even maybe use the hackathon as sort of a teaching tool. Um, you, you, can, uh, you can think of maybe um, instead of, uh, a workshop where you're talking at people, you're actually doing something with the participants, and you're you're sort of using the hackathon as a way to uh, give people a skill. Um, so, in general, the the amount of time that you have affects the the scope of the the project or hack, hackathon. The more time you have, the more expansive the scope can be. Then the final question is, um, what is your plan for follow-up? Um, so in my experience, um, many hackathons do not, they don't quite finish their goal, um, but they get most of the way there, maybe 80% 80, 80 of the way there. Um, or maybe the, they do finish their goal, but um, the, the task that you're trying to accomplish is one task out of, in a big project. Um, so to go with my running example of cleaning this data set, um, when, um, when people were looking through this uh, set of, of uh, written countries and translating those into specific codes, um, ISO codes for each country, that's one part of cleaning this very large data set. Um, so uh, the plan for follow-up has to involve making sure that the, the rest of the data set gets accomplished. And um, it, in general, someone, someone needs to make sure that the, the rest of the task gets done. Um, someone needs to own that work and, and make sure that there's appropriate follow-up. Uh, in my experience with hackathons, um, often the, the people who attend the hackathon aren't really familiar with the project. And um, maybe they, they won't uh, do much follow-up, and that's okay. Um, but uh, if that's the case, then 
maybe you as the organizer or or someone else needs to take responsibility for making sure that the rest of the tasks get done, which means that you have to, you or someone else needs to do that work. Um, so in, in general, it just helps to think through, okay, uh, we got we got part of the way there. Um, how do we get the rest of the way there? What, what's the, the plan for making sure that happens? So, um, that's um, those are the considerations for planning a hackathon. You can structure your planning process around um, answering those five questions, um, and um, that that might give you a sense of uh, what makes for a good hackathon and what makes for a bad hackathon as well. Um, good hackathons are specific; um, they're achievable. Uh, the tasks are relatively straightforward. The work is batchable. Um, you, you put some thought into how many participants you're likely to get and where they come from, their background knowledge and their skills. Um, and uh, in good hackathons, someone has thought through this, the appropriate scope of the project and the plan for follow-up. Um, so as I go through the, the rest of this workshop, I'm gonna refer back to some of those considerations um, uh, to, to help you think through more, you know, what makes for a good hackathon and what makes for a bad hackathon. Others? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anybody has, uh, has uh, the uh, thinking about uh, Pat's question? Yeah, I think uh, maybe I, I um, basically I uh, I have some experience uh, participating pay, pay, in the hackathon in Taiwan, but uh, uh, because um, I have uh, no one uh, guided me how to go through the hackathon, I just uh, uh, found that, um, uh, if 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 we 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 have we we need to manage a good uh, um good uh, good uh, hackathon, maybe someone have uh, to guide uh, the parties uh, the uh, guide the participants to help them understand what the situation this hackathon has um lay uh they have done like uh, for example if this hackathon will will finish five uh five tasks and when uh, people jo jo join in the middle way someone has to tell him uh what kind of the jobs they are they are running this is what this is the experience that I, i'm thinking then yeah yeah that that's a really good point um so I in in the third section um, I'll show a, a template that um, the so I mentioned this uh, uh, the psychological science accelerator this uh, nonprofit that does team based projects um, that you know South China is also a part of um, so uh, we use a, a template that uh, uh, helps lay out some of these con these uh, considerations for doing a hackathon and gives instructions to people. That makes it a little bit easier to jump in and out of a hackathon, but it's also true that if the hackathon lasts over a long period of time, say um, you know four hours, and uh, someone jumps in um, at the second hour, um, well, they missed maybe that instruction period at the, uh, that happened at the very beginning, and it, it does help a lot if um, someone is uh, is able to uh, say okay. Um, Here's the here's what we're doing. Here's why. Um, here's uh, some specific task that you can work on. If um, if that doesn't happen, then it, it's very hard to and very confusing um, to try to like just jump right in and <laughs> do uh, the same work that everybody else is doing. So that, that can be challenging. That's maybe a, another thing. Good thing to think about as the organizer is. Um, if the hackathon is lasting for a long period of time, um, who's going to be there to um, sort of orient people who are showing up in the middle? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, I have a question regarding the. Hi, this is Junjia. I uh, also attended uh, some of the workshops or hackathons. <laughs> Actually, uh, Xiaoqing was the November one, the hackathon. The, the oh. November online, the the uh, so called. Uh, 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 it's just a rough hackathon. <laughs> okay, because uh, yeah, I think there might be some so called culture. Uh, issue that mm. here we we're from um, you know Asian or Taiwanese Chinese students that yeah. tends to be so-called uh, more passive especially in the classroom um, yeah. I attended um, the uh, workshop before or some conference before and we know that we just li passively listen although uh, we might have questions but we tend to usually go offline uh, asking <laughs> Uh, the lecturers or speakers later in private, yeah. uh, we we I, I don't think we are very uh you know, uh, so called um, actively like waiting in line asking questions, yeah. but <laughs> but yeah. um, the preparations for the participants seems pretty important. But uh, is it uh, good to have some kind of so called icebreakers or? Some kind of so-called, uh, you know, an uh, atmosphere uh, to stir up to to make people, you know, kind of active, or uh, more time for people to ask questions, uh, feeling comfortable uh, joining and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's a really good question. Uh, I think that can help. Um, it also certainly helps to set the expectation ahead of time that. Uh, well, if, if anything is going to happen here, you, you need to participate. Um, I, I found, so I've done um, some teaching of uh, programming classes, um, you know, like uh, programming and using R for, for scientific programming. And um, I found that uh, if, you, if you use Zoom, um, you, you have that breakout room feature. Uh, or if you're doing in-person teaching, you can divide people up into small groups. And um, often the students are, are not so intimidated when, um, <laughs> uh, when they're in somewhat separate, uh, a somewhat, somewhat separate environment from me. Oh. Um, oh, so that, that helps sometimes. Oh, well, I'm just, uh, I'm just a big guy, but I'll <laughs> also, uh, you know, any, any sort of professor-student relationship, I think, uh, Having some separation is leads to easier. Sorry, oh, sorry, is a lot. The this the the other time we the disconnection problem oh. uh, happened again. Oh, uh, sorry. No, 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 no. I, I was just saying. I I think um, small groups or if if you use the breakout feature in Zoom, uh, that can help some um, because. Uh, you know the students are a little bit separate from you, the instructor, and um, that that can lead to somewhat easier participation. Um, but uh, icebreakers, I, I think, are are not a bad idea. Uh, of course, uh, that that does. Um, if you do an icebreaker and it's very extended, that does take up time itself. Um, so uh, it's possible that uh, going more directly into the the work serves the same purpose. Um, but it does help to exchange names and um, uh, just get people um, talking a little bit ahead of time. So I, I think it can be it can be useful. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Please. All right. Um, so this section, uh, I'll talk a bit about. Um, you know, good rules of thumb as a hack participant. Um, uh, one one idea that I, I hope came across in the first section is that um, hackathons need to be structured ahead of time. And there's uh, a fair amount of thinking that you have to do as the organizer um, to make the hack, well, to make it easy to participate as a, as a participant. Um, Another uh, general idea is that um, a hackathon needs to be is focused on doing rather than talking. So it's, it's very important that um, 
as a participant, um, you feel free and able to do whatever the work is that the, the hack is organized around. Um, generally as well, um, hackathons are, are focused on achieving a, a very specific task um, or accomplishing some specific goal. Um, the, the work is also chosen to be batchable. So um, this means that multiple people are working on different aspects of the task at the same time, or maybe the same aspect of the task, but the work is um, it's not duplicated. Um, so what I'm doing as participant one, um, it's, it might be the same kind of work, but it's not exactly the same work as participant two. Um, and remember the, um, the overall task structure that you're going for is where you have an overall task that's divided into subtasks that are spread out across lots of people. So what this means as a participant um, is um, you, you can sort of derive some rules of thumb from these uh, important aspects of a, of a hackathon. Um, one is that as a participant, as much as possible, you should stick to the structure that was laid out by the organizer. Um, hopefully the, the organizer has given some thought to, to planning out how the hackathon is structured. And um, you know, as a participant, you don't necessarily want to disrupt that um, because uh, they've they presumably thought about like background knowledge, what you as a participant have is background knowledge and the structure of the task and um, uh, with the specific goal that they want to achieve. Um, however, uh, there are some things that you can do as a participant to sort of orient the group to um, the, the, what a hackathon is like, especially for people who are less familiar with the structure. Um, so uh, one thing that, that has come up for me anyway is uh, a lot of people have uh, trouble thinking about this idea of hackathons as oriented towards doing rather than talking. Um, so uh, one thing you can do is if, you're, if your group is um, doing a lot of talking, um, they're treating this as uh, more of a, you know, a workshop or um, th that's more of the format that they're familiar with. You can try to nudge people along towards talk, towards doing instead. Um, so that just means like, um, oh, you know, um, what the tasks that we're working on is um, coding countries. Um, do you have the, the spreadsheet open? And, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take these 10 rows, you can take these other 10 rows. Um, you can sort of nudge people along towards uh, uh, focusing on the task rather than talking about focusing on the task. <laughs> um, if I, uh, often in hackathons, you divide up into small groups. Um, and if the, the goal of your, your group, small group is uh, fairly broad, um, you can also thinking, think about dividing that uh, very broad goal into more specific sub goals that are easier to work on. Um, so to going back to that um, country coding example, um, you can even divide the, the goal of um, translating these, uh, uh, these pieces of written text into ISO codes into something even more specific by saying, well, I take these 20 rows you take uh, these next 20 rows. Notice that's uh, even more specific than the goal of uh, coding all of these countries. And um, getting more and more specific is a great way of uh, moving more and more towards doing. Um, because uh, once a goal is very specific, it, it ends up being very clear what each person needs to do in order to make progress. So um, that's a, yeah, go ahead. Question for Sorry, sorry for jumping in. Uh, for the question yeah. number two, uh, yes. can I um, ask in a different way? Uh, sure. If one of the group member is, or more group members is or are idling, try to move them toward uh, actions or doing, mm -hmm. is the same? Yes. Um, yeah, so the, the idea here is, um, if uh, 
if people are are doing a lot of talking because that is uh, the the format that they're familiar with, um, I you can uh, often do some uh, subtle indirect things to mm. nudge them towards uh, uh, towards acting yeah. instead. So the the example that I, I uh, yes. was talking about is um, uh, imagine you know one of your group members is uh, talking about uh, what's needed to um, code these uh, free mm. text into ISO codes. So you can say, oh, um, well, let's look at the the spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. um, look at these uh, first 20 rows. Do you think uh, you could take those and I'll take the next 20? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the sort of thing that I have in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not that, in my experience anyway, it's not that uh, any one person doesn't want to act. It's just that more often they're not familiar with uh, yeah. the, the very direct focus on action that um, mm -hmm. you have in the hackathon. Yes. That's, that's my question. My question is like, they're not talking, they're just idling. They're just <laughs> just not idling. moving at all. They're not doing anything, just sit there. Uh, yeah, well, in that case, um, I mean, without being rude about it, you can say, oh, um, you know, uh, what are you working on right now? Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's a, a slightly different problem, but... Mm -hmm. um, I, you can still use the same technique, I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, sorry. Continue, please. Yes. Um, so the next rule of thumb is um, just to, to make okay. sure that um, you and the other participants in the hack are uh, not duplicating each other's work. Um, that's uh, often the, the organizer has already given some thought to this. Um, so it's, it's not always necessary to do this, but um, it's just, it's good to make sure that uh, in the process of batching the work, breaking it up into different chunks and giving it to lots of different people that you don't have two people that are um, doing the same work and uh, wasting time. <laughs> um, so uh, those are, in my experience anyway, those are a few techniques that you can use as a, a participant in a hack to make sure that's successful. Um, there are also some like bigger picture principles um, that are just good to keep in mind. Um, one of them uh, that's, that's very important is um, uh, make sure that uh, you as a hack participant uh, don't uh, hold yourself back from contributing, either because uh, you feel like you don't have the required skills or knowledge, um, or uh, I don't know if you're, you're feeling shy, for example. Um, so uh, the, the whole point of a hackathon is to try to batch the work, to break it up into multiple pieces that can be given to lots of people. Um, and uh, that only leads to this nice burst of uh, accomplishment if uh, all those different people um, work on the batches and then the batches get joined back up together. Um, so uh, this means that uh, even contributions that feel small, um, where uh, you know you feel like you, you don't have the skills to do this uh, do the particular task um, or the, the larger task uh, add up to something much larger. Um, and often the, the success of the hackathon relies on even unskilled people um, working on the, the larger tasks so that they can do the things that, you know, it's appropriate to do as uh, someone who has less familiar with the, the job. Um, so that all of those can add up together to create the larger batch of work. So this is very important. Um, uh, and this is something to, to think about as the organizer too, to make sure that the hack participants know that um, they don't have to be, have the greatest skills in order to do something really, really great um, to uh, add up to this larger accomplishment. So I think this, this one is, it's quite important. Um, 
And uh, as the organizer, it's important to set that that right atmosphere so that people feel like they can contribute and know that it's um, the whole point is not that um, any one person is very skilled or uh, really um, knowledgeable about the topic. The, the point is to join up a, a lot of smaller contributions into something bigger. Uh, another nice principle to keep in mind is um, something called the 80-20 rule. Um, so it's often the case when you're doing a task that um, uh, 20%, the first 20% of the work um, uh, ends up with 80% of the accomplishment. Um, what this means is um, often there's, uh, there's a certain period of doing a task where um, your work goes very far, um, where you can accomplish a lot. And then um, in order to get the project the, the rest of the way, you know, when you're polishing the, the project, um, there are some tasks that are very time consuming, um, but so I end up with less of the accomplishment. And so what you're looking for in a hackathon is for that 20% that leads to 80% of the, um, the accomplishments on the, on the project. Um, it, you're looking for, to do the major things, not the polishing. Um, so that's something you can talk to your hack participants about too. Um, if, uh, if the product is not perfect, that's fine. Um, you're not aiming for perfection during a hackathon. Instead, you're looking for to do the work that gets you most of the way there. And then um, in some of the, the wrap-up work, you know, the follow-up, um, that can involve some of the polishing and the, the more time-consuming steps that might be important, but only lead to 20% of the accomplishment. So big picture idea here is uh, look for the, the things that you can do in a short amount of time that get you most of the way there to finishing the project. OK, um, I've talked about uh, the planning process as an organizer, um, some principles for um, how to participate in the hackathon. Um, Next, I'll, I'll show you the template that we use in the Psychological Science Accelerator, that, that nonprofit that I've mentioned a couple times. Um, and I'll, I'll walk you through a couple examples of hackathons that um, I participated in. Um, in the Psychological Science Accelerator, um, we use uh, Google Docs for a lot of things. <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of most of our hackathons are electronic because um, we try to allow people from many different countries to participate. Um, so this is a Google Docs template that I'm showing you. Um, it's linked on the OSF page that Sauchin, um shared with, with everybody. Um, so um, in terms of the, the elements of the, the Google Doc, um, this first part um, talks about where and when the hack is and for how long. Um, this makes it easy for people to know um, where to go, um, you know, what link they need to use, uh, at what time. Um, we usually put multiple time zones um, to try to make it easier for, for people in different parts of the world um, and what the time commitment is. So this, uh, May, hopefully makes it easy for people to, to think, okay, can, do I have the time and the ability to uh, uh, contribute to this hackathon? Um, the next part is a detailed agenda. Um, so I've mentioned a couple times how being specific about um, uh, the parts of the hackathon is, is uh, important to the planning process. Uh, we give a, a rough breakdown of the amount of time that is uh, will be devoted to different uh, parts of the hackathon. Um, I find any way that thinking about the, the timing is really nice for getting specific. Um, and also there's uh, specific amounts of time devoted to, you know, waiting for everybody to filter into the, the Zoom room. Um, and uh, 
discussing the the plans of the uh, hackathon. Um, so um, and it's uh, I find it's nice to build those into the the plan those uh, parts to into the um, hack process. Um, for in the psychological science accelerator, we also keep records of um, who participated in the hack. Um, this is just uh, a nice way of doing record keeping. Might not be necessary for all hacks, but uh, you know, I think it's it's nice to keep track of who did what. Uh, and we also have a, an explicit section um, that sets the the context for the hack. So this is that background information that. Um, might be important for understanding why the project is important in the first place or how it fits into some larger goal um, for a, you know, a scientific project or whatever the hack is devoted to. Uh, you can even use this section to talk about um, uh, why the project is uh, important in general. Um, if often when people know the importance of the project, it's a nice way to motivate them to um, work hard. Um, so you can do that in the contact section as well. Um, so uh, the next section talks about any required preparation that the uh, participants need to do in order to participate in the hack. Um, this might include like doing some background reading or um, yeah, uh, often background reading is the what goes here. Uh, if if the participants don't need to do anything special, you can say that here too. Um, and uh, it's nice that it it says in the section it says uh, none required because uh, that tells the participants, oh, you really don't need to do anything special; just show up. Um, that might get more people to actually show up. Um, if the participants need to have any required skills, you can use this next section to talk about that. Um, likewise, if uh, no special skills are required, you can write that too. So this is another way you can tell everybody, no, really, you know, just show up and that'll probably help. Um, the next section includes any links or um, uh, information that is required to do the work during the hack. Um, so uh, anything that, that is required to actually accomplish the task, write that there. And then finally, um, the, the last section talks about the um, very specific goals of the hackathon. You know, the when you thought about what the task is um, and thought about the task so, scope, um, write out a sp very specifically what it is that you want to accomplish in this hack. And um, I didn't mention this, but the, the last section talks about uh, any notes that come up in the over the course of doing the hack. So you can use this uh, template for record keeping as well. Um, so the first example of a hackathon um, that, that I organized uh, uses this template. Um, so I'll just show you um, what this looks like uh, when you use it in action. Um, so the, the example that I'm giving is uh, this example I've already talked about where um, we are taking this uh, written free text of uh, the countries where the participants were um, doing this particular study. We were taking that pre free that free text and translating it into ISO codes, which are a standard way of indicating countries. Uh, so you can see the Zoom link that we used, um, the uh, agenda. Um, here's the actual attendance of the hackathon. Um, at the top, you can see that it has the, the date, the time, um, how long we were doing the hackathon for. Um, there's uh, some context for why the hackathon is, uh, why we're doing the hackathon in the first place. Um, there's uh, 
as some description of the required hack preparation. In this case, the, nothing was required. Um, there's uh, the required links. So uh, country underscore on process was a spreadsheet that we were using to do all this um, uh, translation of written text into ISO codes. Um, notice that we, we also um, talk specifically about what each of the columns of the spreadsheet means. Um, and uh, there's kind of a detailed procedure for actually doing the coding. Um, when I was uh, describing the hackathon um, to the participants, um, I also uh, walked people through the procedure for, it took maybe about five to 10 minutes. Um, and uh, after that, everybody was able to do it on their own. Um, so uh, one thing to point out too, is the, the work that we were doing in this hackathon was very structured. Um, so um, there was a, spe a specific spreadsheet that we created ahead of time. Um, the spreadsheet had uh, data validation. So um, what that means is there was a little drop down that um, people clicked on that had all the country ISO codes listed. Um, so it wasn't possible for someone to accidentally type in the wrong uh, ISO code with a typo. Um, it was uh, it was extremely structured, um, and that's part of what I think made this hackathon successful. So we were able to do all of the uh, the country coding. The spreadsheet had like uh, two to three thousand rows, and uh, we finished it in two hours. Um, and uh, that was possible because uh, I think because uh, the work was so structured. Uh, this is a second example that is taken from uh, a hackathon at the Society for the Improvement of Psychological Science. Um, it does not use the template that I, I showed you, but it still, I think, um, hits all of the important elements of uh, thinking about and organizing a hackathon. Mm -hmm. um, so this was a, um, a campaign to try to get uh, journals to adopt transparency policies. Um, it's uh, an example that I've already mentioned. It was at the 2017 meeting for the Society of the Improvement of Sorry, Psychological Science. Okay. Yes? OK. Um, so uh, what, what was involved in this hackathon was um, oh, uh, so sorry, it's uh, disconnect. Oh, OK. Uh, you can hear me now? OK. okay. You, just, uh, uh, you, just, you just start to, to, to start uh, this example. Yes, OK. Um, did you get the first example? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, so this, uh, the second example, um, it was a campaign to try to get journals to adopt some um, open science policies. Mm -hmm. It was at the 2017 meeting for the Society of the Improvement of Psychological Science. Uh, you can see the, a link to the materials for this hackathon on the slide. Um, so, uh, what was, uh, involved was, um, using mm -hmm. these, uh, guidelines called the top guidelines um, to score journals on their policies. Um, so you went to a bunch of journal websites, um, found their policies, and then used this uh, set of guidelines to give them a, a particular score. Um, there were a lot of materials um, that were prepared ahead of time. So all you need to do was to get into the room, uh, look at a journal website, and uh, go through the scoring process. Uh, very structured, um, and uh, I think that's why it, it was successful. So you can see um, uh, on this page, 119 journals were evaluated based on the top guidelines. Well, the reason they were able to go through so many journals was that the, the process was so structured. Um, here's some more information uh, about this hackathon. Um, you can see that it provides, uh, there's some context for the hackathon. 
Um, there was a very detailed agenda. Um, uh, I'll, I'll let you, uh, if you're interested, you can go through the materials that were listed here. Um, but uh, one of the big picture points that I want you to take away uh, from this is that the process is very structured. The goal is very specific. Um, the uh, materials were organized so that as a participant, you can walk into the room, um, get a little bit of orientation and uh, know what to do in order to help. Okay, um, so I've talked about the uh, considerations for planning a hackathon, um, what makes for a good hackathon as a participant, and I've gone through a couple examples. Um, I think now is a good time to talk about uh, when a hackathon is uh, actually useful. Um, what's a, a good example for a place you can do in a, a hackathon? Um, so these were the, the questions that I laid out for that you should think through when organizing a hackathon. And I think you can use these questions to think about um, times when a hackathon is uh, really works well and times when it uh, might not work as well. Um, so you're looking for specific tasks that are batchable. Um, you need access to a fair number of participants. You need to think about their background knowledge and skills. Um, you should think about the amount of time that you have and your plan for follow-up. Um, so I, I think uh, hackathons are most useful when you have a specific, a specific achievable task that you can batch into relatively simple chunks. Um, so you're looking for tasks that have that structure where you can distribute work across many people at the same time. You also need access to a fair number of people with uh, relevant background knowledge and skills. Or um, if, uh, if the people don't have much background knowledge and skills, the task really does need to be quite simple. Um, so if you think through the examples that I've used of where um, hackathons work well, usually there is this pool of, of uh, ready participants who can jump right in and um, get to work. So in the Psychological Science Accelerator, for example, um, we have uh, 1,400 members who are lucky to be to have quite a few people who um, want to help out. Um, we have this uh, uh, Slack, the, the PSA Slack, that is uh, pretty active. And that makes for uh, a fairly easy way to organize hackathons. Um, as long as we have this, these conditions where we have this specific achievable task that you can batch into, into simple chunks. This is also why I think hackathons work well at um, at conferences, because uh, the purpose of the conference is to bring together a bunch of people. Um, they may not have a lot of background knowledge, but as long as you have a specific achievable task, you can do a lot um, with uh, the number of people that you get at a conference. Um, at a conference as well, you can usually assume some background knowledge of whatever the conference is about. So at the Society for the Improvement of Psychological Science, the purpose of the conference is to improve psychological science, often by through um, by implementing open science or open science principles. So you can assume some background knowledge anyway of open science initiatives. Um, I also think hackathons can work well in um, teaching settings, um, I, although you, they, I think they need to be planned with care. Um, the reason they can work well is that you have all the students, you know, in a teaching setting, you have some number of students, that gives you access to a fair number of people. And as long as you have enough time to give the students the skills that they need or the background knowledge, um, that can be a setting where you can combine some sort of task with, um, with teaching um, so that you can accomplish both goals at once. Um, and then finally, um, you should think carefully about how much time you have and uh, what the plan is for following up on the hackathon. Um, so that means uh, 
not making the scope of the hackathon too broad, um, and also making sure that someone um, is responsible for any follow-up that's necessary to finish up the task. Um, so you, the hackathon may be accompl accomplished 80% of the work. Um, who's going to do that 20% that involves polishing the results? So um, the last part of the presentation was really just about brainstorming. Um, uh, where do you think hackathons can be useful in your work? And uh, for this section, um, I, I guess it's a, it's a little bit um, up to you all um, uh, how much you want to dig into this question. Um, so I, I guess I'll open the floor. You know, do you have any thoughts or um, questions for me, or um, did you want to follow up on any parts of the presentation, um, or you know, maybe you have a specific example of where you might want to use this uh, uh, for for your work? So uh, I guess I'll open the floor. Uh, what questions do you have, or do you have specific thoughts about where this could be useful for you? Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Pat. Uh, okay, it's very uh, useful talk for us. And uh, you just uh, mentioned uh, you think the uh, we could uh, organize the hackathon when we teaching the start study. Actually, I also have a try some try try uh try sometimes in um when i when 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 my students they are organizing the project but uh, but uh, i have yet uh uh think about uh because you have your example in your example you mentioned we bet we have to to make sure what are the preparation before hacks. Um, so how do you think if the the still if, if we uh, in I think uh, in uh, in uh, in many in in sometimes the students they don't they don't know what kind of the skills they could uh, uh, help this quite help this uh, question or they don't know how to uh, contribute to to this uh, topic. Uh, how could you uh, help them uh, get involved in uh, if if they if if, uh, if they have uh, if they don't know how to contribute? How do you think? Yeah, uh, really good question. So um, I, I have two thoughts here. Um, one is that in a teaching setting, there's a bit of a balance between um, using the time for teaching and using the time to accomplish the specific task. Because um, often the work that's required to accomplish the specific task is, um, it, you know, the students will get something out of it, but it's, it's not the best for the accomplishing the teaching goal. Because it might be that the, the work that's required is entering stuff into a spreadsheet. Maybe it can be some, somewhat useful for learning, but uh, there's a limit to what you can learn from uh, entering stuff into a spreadsheet. The really interesting stuff um, for teaching is maybe thinking through like, uh, what's the structure of the task? You know, some of that planning that I mentioned is so important before the hackathon. Um, so that's why I think there's a bit of a balance here because you might move some of that work that, you know, the, from the planning process into the hackathon itself and think through with the students, um, well, how should we organize the work and who, who does what? Um, and uh, maybe that's what, what you as an instructor try to guide the students through is some of that, that planning work. Um, but uh, also the students, they, they might not know exactly, um, as, you, as you were just saying, um, uh, how to think through uh, how to structure the task. Um, how to do all that planning, um, so they they might not be so able to contribute. So it's it's a bit of a balancing act where uh, you want to do um, some of the planning up front because just about anybody could enter things into a spreadsheet, um, and uh, that's something that the students might not realize is so important for um, 
accomplishing a, a scientific project. Um, uh, but uh, on the other hand, you don't want the whole hackathon necessarily to just be entering stuff into a spreadsheet. Um, although, you know, I think the students do get something out of that because they learn, oh, actually, a lot of this grunt work is it's really quite important for science and, and other sorts of uh, projects. Um, and they also get a sense of accomplishment at the end, like, hey, you know, that that was maybe uh, we were maybe just entering stuff into a spreadsheet. But look what we accomplished at the end. We were able to um, contribute to this real scientific project that, um, uh, you know, could affect people and, you know, could advance knowledge. And that's that's a nice feeling, too. So I guess I don't have a like one answer for you, but um, there's uh, I think it's possible to balance those different goals um, to structure the work um, a fair amount uh, ahead of time, um, move some of the planning process into the hackathon, um, and also rely on that that feeling of accomplishment and you know the the some the learning that you might do even through just like entering stuff into a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, and how about Junjia and Junyu? Do you have any question or 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 uh, thinking? I have asked uh, some of the questions earlier, so yeah, I'll leave it to Junyu. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, and I learned a lot. Uh, but I'm still a little bit confused about the goal or the format so uh i can imagine three kinds of scenarios so the first is more like my original uh impression like from the coding community it's kind of like mm -hmm. a competition events kind of thing so it's more like brainstorming or like creativity or novelty kind of thing Mm -hmm. And the second sounds like uh, some kind of routine or easy job and dissect them for, for people to help to to complete the job, more like the country code example you were saying. Yes. And the third may be like uh, an event to for people to learn something, like the teaching yes. environment. So I'm just still thinking about this and uh, how this compared to other maybe similar forms like hands-on workshop or problem-based learning kind of discussion groups yeah. and what's the benefit of uh, Hackathon? Be because I think maybe one important thing of Hackathon is that people gathering together and do it uh, in a short time together. Uh, so maybe there's something special here uh, I, I just don't know what you think about this. Yeah, it's it's a good observation. Um, so you could think about um, if you're gathering people together, there are a couple different purposes for that gathering. One is to actually finish the task. One is uh, maybe for learning for the benefit of the participants. And uh, one is maybe that creative process, that sort of free flowing discussion that you mentioned. Um, and uh, of course, in reality, any sort of uh, gathering will have elements of all of those. Um, the hackathon, I think, is a little bit more focused on the task. Um, so uh, you're, you might have some of that free-flowing discussion, but um, that uh, has maybe already happened. Um, actually, at the Society for the Improvement of Psychological Science, there's uh, another format of gathering people called um, an unconference. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, kind of a silly name, but the, the, the idea behind it is um, you're doing some of that planning process or figuring out, well, what is the problem that we want to solve? So yeah. it's maybe happens, uh, that's the thing that happens before the hackathon. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and there also, there's also at the Society for the Improvement of Psychological Science, the workshops that's more focused on the teaching and learning. And um, in my experience, each meeting um, has, uh, they, they do all three things a little bit. It's just that the focus is a little bit more on one of the things. Um, so at the unconference, it's more of the creative discussion. At the hackathon, it's maybe more task focused. And at the workshop, it's more focused on learning. 
But, you know, if, you, if you're planning something out, you, you can sort of mix and match a little bit. Um, and that can determine what exactly you do. Um, but I think in, in general, the hackathon, it's, it's more focused on the task, although it can accomplish the other things as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Very good to know. Because I, I uh, participated in the SIPs uh, of last year, 2020. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I got a little bit confused about the names of those events. Yeah, but now, um, now I get more idea. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very confusing. And um, last year was also the first time that was online. So uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was an unusual um, year as well. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I, I'm also curious about uh, how to screen uh, participants' uh, background, require skills or knowledge, or how to train them. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe like SIPs, uh, the participants, may, maybe most of them have some basic ideas, but like our experience last uh, the last event we organized, uh, or or like in my class, I uh, uh, I noticed that like even some students they have never used Google Docs, so mm -hmm. how to use the functions and this kind of thing, and maybe even there there might be participants not familiar with Office, like Microsoft products kind of thing. So yeah. should we screen those people if we are tasked? involve those things? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, in, um, in my experience so far, there's been uh, very little screening. Instead, um, the qualifications are listed on the mm, board yes. documents. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, I mean, that, that maybe is enough, but uh, I can't imagine that as a participant, it might be disappointing that you are trying to help, and um, mm. but uh, suddenly there's this qualification that you didn't realize that you needed. Um, that that might be a, a frustrating experience. So I don't have a, a great answer for you. Mm. Um, I I've mostly relied on listing the qualifications. Um, I, I'd be interested if if any of you have uh, ideas about this. Um, if there's a better way to do it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think something might be similar is that yeah. you mentioned uh, doing is more important than talking in the group. So this yes. is something uh, interesting to me. But also you said uh, uh, maybe not good to duplicate jobs. Yes. But I think it, uh, it, it will depend on the uh, all of the participants maybe having similar skills or, or you trust their work. So, but in reality, for example, if we're doing a study and trying to analyze the data in our lab, so I'm, oftentimes I, I, I'm not sure if the students is doing right or the system, so maybe need some backup plan or trying to verify, uh, a way to verify their work. And oh. also, yeah, yeah, this kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, um, I, actually, I have an idea for how to um, address that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that we did in this country coding hack that I mentioned, yes. where we actually organized two hacks. Um, mm -hmm. So we got multiple codes of the countries, and that way we yeah. could check for consistency, reliability. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, something like this, yeah. So there, I, I think there are solutions. And you're right, um, if you're allowing uh, people without a specialized skill to, you know, do something that you're going to rely on for analysis. You do want some sort of uh, checking, but I, I think mm -hmm. that's possible. And, um, and you can, especially if it's something like, um, you know, looking up information on the internet. Well, you know, it is true that most people can do that. And um, so as long as you get, uh, have some sort of check, I, I think mm -hmm. that's, uh, you can rely on the results. Mm. Yes, I think from our experience last time, uh, if some of the participants is not very well with 
the necessary skills and if they got assigned with some tasks and they have trouble with mm -hmm. that they don't know how to proceed then we might need somebody to help them or tutor them kind of thing and it's also a little bit uh confusing or for, for us like at yes. the same time so and when we're working online so do we yeah. speak to them to the old group or like privately and how how this can be perceived uh better yeah yeah um do you have uh, are you using zoom or a different video platform for teaching uh last time i think we we're using teams the similar Team. platform yeah, yeah. That was also i think, I think yeah. they have uh, breakout rooms there and um when when i've been teaching over zoom uh, i found that the breakout room is very nice for um if i give people a task to work on because that way um I can also go to the the rooms one by one and be there for um, to answer questions or to help uh, you know resolve problems um, yeah. along the way. So it, it sort of uh, allows the the students to feel like they're able to do things without me constantly looking over their shoulder, but I can still be there as a resource. Mm -hmm. I guess um, one one way that this can work for if and when we return to in-person teaching is um, you can have a facilitator who mm -hmm. uh, knows a little bit more about uh, the task and they can mm -hmm. be there to help with things like, oh, you know, I'm not as familiar with Google Docs or the software. Um, so that allows for a little bit more uh, of individualized assistance. That might be mm -hmm. a solution. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think maybe working online can be another, factor that make it more difficult like uh if the parties are not familiar with zoom or microsoft teams yeah. kind of thing and also like like what i i was saying was like my experience last time was something like uh i got a job oh, and i'm sorry, doing it so we talk now i think i am uh i can hear you yeah okay i'll keep counting uh keep going so i i got a job and i was concentrating okay. on, my, on my job but mm -hmm. somebody else they might have trouble and or they're talking and at that time I feel kind mm -hmm. of like distracting for me yeah. so online I have this kind of experience yeah definitely and that's um just uh some challenges related to <laughs> yeah the world the technical right yeah. yeah um I I found though that the the chat is uh, can be a nice feature for teaching mm -hmm. online, um, mm -hmm. especially for. So I, I mostly have taught um, things related to coding. I think I mentioned that, yes. um, and uh, the chat is nice for that because I can tell people, okay, um, write this uh, bit of code and then post the results in the chat, mm -hmm. and um, that way it allows for a break. Um, mm -hmm. I can see that people successfully executed the bit of code and it allows mm -hmm. me to do a little bit of troubleshooting the problems do come up. Mm -hmm. um, so that, I don't know, that's one technique that's worked for me. Yeah, 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 good to know. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think Jun, Jun Jia, you can speak, you can speak out. I think you're muted. Okay. Oh yeah, I, I just unmuted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the experience will help us better because um, most of us have, uh, or at least for me, only have uh, teaching experiences, and uh, yeah, and also as teachers, we're used to like keep talking, talking for two, three <laughs> hours, so. <laughs> Yeah, we, we really, I mean, to have, have some attending experiences and then start planning for, um, I actually wrote down the beginning question in the early phase, but I just withdraw it. I can repaste, but it's actually for Shao Qing. <laughs> it was, uh, okay, so here's the, the question. The question was, uh, yeah, the, the, you are talking from the organizer's perspective, but I only have the limited uh, experience as attendees. And lack of preparation is a common symptom for 
I guess attendees from Taiwan, at least for me. <laughs> so, uh, so, so when you started by asking the right question or asking the, you know, like the good question, that's hard. That that is, I guess, the 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 tough question. How to start from a, like a, you know, just like a science is to to ask the right question. You have to have some experience or research experience, and then you know how to, you know, like either upscale or down downsize your 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 question and also relevant to your um yeah your your participants and also the time scale and many many others so i guess we just have to have more experience and then we'll learn from those experiences <laughs> that's what i i i like to say at the beginning but i guess no i don't have many questions i think last time shaojin and i we had a very uh, like a similar workshop, like teaching people how to not not teaching, like sharing our experience of um, online experimentations using uh, Open Sesame and Site Toolkit, and um, yeah, I think that that's a one experience. But we we need to, yeah, if we want to make a hackathon of something like that, we need to make the um, the the question like. Uh, the attendees should have some kind of motivation. They want to have something done with this uh, like online experimentation uh, programming environment. And then they have to have some kind of pressure. Oh. <laughs> so and then that, that kind of hackathon will be more valuable. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's what I will have to think about. <laughs> yeah. So I don't yeah. have questions. Yeah. <laughs> I think most questions will come when it, when when we start our own uh, hackathon. Yeah, and the, the question will be yeah yeah will be will we deal with later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also want to echo that. So sounds like if hackathon is for completing some tasks, uh, that might be easier. So uh, when we're when we know what to do and how to do it. Uh, yeah. Okay, Patrick's there. Yeah, but I think maybe more difficult for us is something like on conference, like beforehand to to discuss and figure out what or or like a bigger question and how we can do that and what's the 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 steps. And in this hexagon, we're doing this part or or yeah, this certain job maybe. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And uh, Jinjia, um, the, your your comment about how um, in a hackathon choosing the the task is it can be quite challenging as the organizer. I, I also think that's right. Um, I I think part of it is uh, you just get experience uh, figuring out. Okay, this is the amount of time I have and. This is what I think is achievable. Um, so it's uh, sort of something that you need to learn by doing. Um, and then the, the last uh, comment about um, uh, how maybe the unconference is uh, the more challenging format. I think I, I found that too. Um, I think those, uh, those can be hard to make um, to structure in the right way because uh, some challenges that I've seen is that it's very easy for one person to dominate the unconference, maybe because they're the most knowledgeable um, or they, they're the most confident or uh, whatever. So if you're using an unconference as a way of like trying to get people thinking about a topic, well, it, it needs to be structured in a way to allow everybody to actually talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think uh, I can summarize uh, summarize the uh, past tips about how to organize and manage the hackathon on uh, on a brief and put it put it put it on our uh, website and the social main 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 and social uh, media uh, for others will access our information information. Let's uh, let them let them uh, let them let them know uh, if, if 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 we will 
uh, launch a hackathon, we will uh, we uh, will, we will do it like this way, and uh, then 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 we then and uh, that's where uh, that that is like uh, implicit learning for every part 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 part. Then then uh, when we really launch a hackathon, we may. Yeah. We may at uh, we may at uh, the first or second hackathon we may have a take some take some time to to let the participant know how to uh, what are the tasks they will they could select and uh, and uh, how to uh, come uh, how to uh, how uh, and uh, how and how to complete that is the, uh, I think we will uh, we. Uh, we could do in our in our next in our the next time uh, because uh, this year we we will uh, run uh, uh, we we uh, we, uh, we we will run a hackathon in uh, our meeting in somewhere when SIPS uh, launch uh, the annual meeting uh, this time because. Uh, 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 now in Taiwan, our situation is uh, fairly uh, safe uh, compared to the other co country. We may have an op opportunity to get a pe get a people to attend the six event 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 events. And uh, I think the, uh, our job is to to help the others like uh, uh, but, um, uh, to. To let them uh, un uh, understand how to participate in the the some um some uh some events like a like a hackathon they they they, ne they never attend be uh, before so we so we so I so we so we will uh, run uh, some mini hacker uh some mini hackathon here here. Uh, before we uh, we link with with the uh, mm -hmm. manual meeting, so so I so I think we uh, at a, so I so I so I so I think uh, at a, uh, at a, uh, um, when we have uh, the uh, when we have our our plan and uh, we think. Uh, uh, we will uh, we uh, we uh, we uh, we will run a hackathon like uh, uh, we learned from Pat today. Today he he shared with with uh, 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 he shared with uh, us. Then then we then when 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 the sixth meeting is on board, we we could uh, the the others could could uh, work. With with Pat and the other the the other uh the other members to run the workshop and the uh hackathon with them, yeah. This is what we are. That that uh, that that is why I think our community is the will be the first pioneer to let the other people to understand how uh, how um how uh, how uh, how to run the activity. Yeah, like uh, Hagerson and the others. Yeah, as yeah, that is the the why I today I I I uh, I invite uh, Pat to share his experience with us. Yeah, others. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, how do you think about? Okay, how uh, do you have any thoughts and comments? Okay. Um. Well, Please feel free to use me as a resource. Absolutely, <laughs> okay. um, and uh, I also think um, the the point that you made about um, how uh, people can sort of implicitly learn or learn by doing um, that is a benefit of the or a potential benefit of the hackathon structure because it is sort of planned out in advance, and someone does a little bit of the the, the planning. Um, well, that means that uh, people don't have to. They don't have to know everything as long as uh, someone has done that structuring ahead of time. So um, yeah. that that really makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. Uh, actually, I think the 
the experience, the uh, learn how uh, the best learn, 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 learning is to to join uh, uh, the uh, the real uh, the real uh, real the real hackers of uh, events for two to three times. The you uh, everybody will 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 know uh, how to run it. Yeah, this is my my experience. Yeah. Okay. 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 I I think now it's almost uh, the uh, dinner time for us and the lunch time for Pedro, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very Thank you much for, yeah. for your you. work and for your time. Yeah, Absolutely. I wish uh, we have we will we will we uh, someday we will meet uh, face to uh, face to face, not not, not in this way. Yes. I hope so. Yeah. Yes. 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 I've, I've never been to Taiwan. Um, wow. I, yeah. I've spent some time um, in uh, mainland China, um, oh. but uh, I, I would love to see Taiwan sometime. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yep. Thank uh, you. See you. Hey, well, nice to meet you. Okay. Bye thanks. bye. See you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.